The following video was filmed during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently striking, the works being covered here wouldn't exist. I fully support both the WGA and SAG after in their fight for fair treatment and compensation against a system that continually denies them such. While sag -AFTRA has asked that creators such as myself refrain from anything that constitutes promotion of work from Struck Studios, they have made allowances for the creation of analytical critique and review, as these do not constitute promotion of the work, but instead critical assessment of art. Any praise I give to these works should be purely seen as praise for the artists, writers, and actors who created them. And any criticism that I issue should not be taken as meaning that I believe they do not deserve full and fair compensation. I will continue to do my best to support the unions as the strike continues. Thank you. I do not have nearly as much pink in my wardrobe as you might think I would. Well, maybe I'm wearing some pink on the bottom half. You don't know. So, late to the party, talking about what is, at time of recording, the biggest, most successful movie of the year. Barbie has now beaten the Super Mario Brothers movie as the highest grossing film released in 2023, and it is unlikely to be topped by any of the things remaining to come out this year. This is the biggest movie to come out this year. It is released by a major studio, it is a massive brand, but it's also very subversive, particularly about the brand that it is ostensibly an extension of. Co-written and directed by Greta Gerwig, Barbie dives pretty deep into a lot of philosophical, existential fears and concerns and ideas about Barbie's place in the world for better or for worse. It delves into patriarchy, ultimately landing on the fact that it is just as damaging to men as it is women, even though they think they benefit from it. It is a movie that has infuriated the right, been embraced by a large portion of the left, has been hailed as a subversively feminist film and an insightful and incisive one at that. So why didn't I like it nearly as much as pretty much everyone I know? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what, that's what this is about. This is about. Now, before I get into this and I go down this rabbit hole, I want to be clear on something. I think Barbie's a good movie. I think it might even be a great movie. I get why everyone likes it. I don't think anyone's wrong. And I don't think anybody is missing something or that like I've cracked the code of the secret problems with Barbie. I think even some of the stuff that I'm going to point out has been noted by some people and in some cases was noted within the film itself. But it still landed not quite right with me for one reason that is not the movie's fault, and then the reason that kind of is at least a little bit the movie's fault, and that's the one I'm gonna spend a heck of a lot more time dealing with. But also, even with that second one, I get why it hasn't hit everybody as being a issue with the movie, whereas it did me. Here's the thing that's not the movie's fault. I didn't get to it for a few weeks. And as a result of that, uh, a lot of it had been spoiled for me. Not like plot-wise. It's got the kind of plot that I don't think is really especially spoilable. It's not really a plot-driven movie, all things considered, but it is a comedy. And a lot of the bits, the jokes, the setups, they had been spoiled for me. Let's beat you off. Anyone who wants to beat him off has to beat me off first. I will beat both of you off at the same time. Either in the trailers or just people who I knew who had seen it, who wanted to talk about certain bits, you know, when I was in the room or even tell me about them or just, you know, osmosis through social media, just catching a lot of stuff. And as a result, there was not a lot in the movie that surprised me. Now, surprise is not the only component of humor. And certainly there are many good movies that should be very, very good, even if you know what's going to happen in them. But the thing is, Knowing in advance what's going to be in it, I think hurts comedies more than others. Because while surprise is not the only component of humor, it is a big one. 
in most cases. A lot of times what gets you to laugh, at least initially, at something is the shock of it. I'm not saying necessarily shock humor, but I'm saying like, that went in a direction I didn't expect. That person said something I wasn't expecting. They worded that in a way I didn't think was going to happen. Didn't see that coming. And I did see most of it coming. I knew most of what was in this. And that, I was going to say probably, no, that definitely uh, hampered the experience at least a little bit for me. And the way I know for a fact that that was at least a contributing factor in my not quite feeling as positive on this as others uh, is because the I can nail down two things. They're not the only two things, but like two things in particular that stood out to me as positives um, were things that I didn't really know too much about in advance. One was America Ferreira. Like I knew she was in the movie, but I didn't know a ton about her part. And I ended up liking her a lot. And I don't think that's only because I didn't know as much about her, but you know, I'd seen all the praise for Margot Robbie and for Ryan Gosling. I'd, I'd seen all that. I'd seen the clips. They're good. They're great in their respective parts. I hadn't seen nearly as much of America Ferreira, so she was able to surprise me. Like, side note, she's not getting nearly as much praise as she should be for this. Do you know how hard it is to be saddled with a character who has to literally spit out the themes of the movie and have that land well and not come across as awkward and clunky and forced and she nails it? Like, come on. I'm not saying that she was better than Margot Robbie or that she was better than Ryan Gosling or that she was better than Will Ferrell. Okay, no, actually, I am going to say she was better than Will Ferrell. But, you know, I didn't know as much about her part going in, and I liked her a lot more as a result of that. And the other thing is the literally last line, last joke of the movie was the one that got the biggest vocalized laugh out of me because, who caught me off guard. Like, big time caught me off guard, that one. And I laughed a lot harder. Not because it was a better joke, but because I didn't see it coming. And so, that's one factor. And that has nothing to do, really, with the movie itself. There's nothing to analyze about that. I kind of had some of the jokes, maybe a lot of the jokes, spoiled, or at least the premises and concepts of them, so it couldn't surprise me too much with where it went. So... That's really nothing to analyze there. But then there's the other thing. The thing that sat in the back of my head. And even after hearing people talk about it, talk about the feminist themes, the empowerment themes, the positivity themes of it, and seeing that analysis, hearing it, agreeing with it, but still not feeling quite right about it. That took a little more time to have to think about. So there's an aspect of the film that I think landed very well for other people, but kind of soured for me as time went on, the more I thought about it. I think it landed well for other people because they're not burnt out on it yet. This has to do with the examination and criticism of Barbie itself by the movie Barbie, because this film is examining the impact that Barbie has on culture. Now, that's not the only thing it's doing. As I said, it's it's doing a takedown of patriarchy. It's doing some other things too, but it is taking the time to examine and comment on and criticize the place that Barbie holds in culture. And I think that endeared a lot of people to this movie. And it didn't work on me. The thing is, it didn't work on me because I know why they did it. And I know too much about why this was allowed to happen. And I've been seeing it too much lately. This is a very effective trick for a little while. The acknowledging of one's own faults, and especially coming from something as protective of itself as a brand like Barbie is. Multiple characters point out the harm that Barbie has laid out, and that's part of Barbie's own existential crisis, is realizing that not everyone thinks she's amazing and awesome and incredible, and realizing why they think that, and feeling that seep into her. I've seen this trick done too many times, though. And the thing is, I know it's effective, 
when you're not immune to it, when you haven't been inoculated to it, when it doesn't feel like you've developed a natural immunity. Because the first time I remember seeing this whole thing pulled was in a much smaller moment. And this, I'm not saying this was the first time, but it's the first one I remember. I think this started my becoming aware of it. Was in The Matrix Resurrections, which is a much better movie than y'all seem to have collectively decided it is, by the way. But anyways, there's a bit very early on where canonically within the film, Keanu Reeves is playing the creator of the Matrix trilogy. In universe, it's a video game trilogy instead of a film trilogy. I'm sure you can understand why our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. What? They inform me they're gonna do it with or without us. And the thing is, that's basically what happened to Lana Wachowski, who directed that movie. It was gonna happen whether she helmed it or not. I was kind of impressed at that, that it got called out in specific. Like the general setup was already a little bit impressive, but what made me feel like, oh, you got away with something. You slipped something under the radar there was the fact that she named Warner Brothers. I was shocked that she got away with that, that they let her do that. And I'm pretty sure I even singled out that moment when I did my review of the movie. But then I kept seeing it again. Next time I saw it, was in the finale of She-Hulk. She-Hulk is a show I'm a bit mixed on, um, but I do think its last three episodes or so are by far the strongest stuff that it has. And in its final episode, it embraces a meta nature and has She-Hulk actually go to the Disney offices and confront Kevin. Now, the inherent implication and assumption is that this is Kevin Feige, the producer and sort of overlord of the MCU. Instead, it turns out Kevin is an AI. Kevin's a computer. It stands for Knowledge Enhanced Visual Interconnectivity Nexus. Deciding what is the best course of action by algorithm and by data. And that's pretty searing to imply that the direction of the biggest franchise going right now in the entire world is just being run by a machine. Now, part of me was a little bit disappointed and did think, wouldn't it be more incisive if you actually had the guy there? Um, and, you know, maybe they decided it wasn't worth doing. Maybe he didn't want to do it. Maybe he wasn't comfortable with somebody impersonating him. Or maybe they um, just decided that this was a better way to go about it. I think it would have been a little bit more uh, incisive to actually hold the people, the actual people, responsible a little bit rather than make a joke out of it. Except it is also kind of incisive to imply that the decisions might as well be a machine because that's what they come across like, which is a point I myself have made in some recent videos. So it still works. Part of the reason that one still got away with it for me is also because it's She-Hulk. And if you've read as much She-Hulk as I have, the series tends to do this. You can look at John Byrne's stuff in the late 80s, and it was not uncommon at all for She-Hulk to literally address the writer and call him on some BS. But it also didn't catch me as off guard, and I liked it. Yeah, as I said, it was the better stuff of that show. But I think that's where I started to hit a natural immunization to this technique, so that when we get to Barbie, we get to its acknowledgement of the brand as potentially damaging, potentially uh, creating a harmful standard of being run by uh, corporate buffoons who don't have the best of intentions, I don't find charm in it anymore. Because once is a fluke, twice is a trend, three times, that's a pattern. And patterns like this in Hollywood, in big budget filmmaking, don't happen by accident. They happen because they are allowed to. And I don't doubt that there are many people who watch Barbie and felt like they had the experience of seeing what a creator got away with. Can you believe Greta Gerwig got away with doing this much criticism of Barbie, the doll and the brand in a movie about Barbie? How'd she get away with it? She didn't get away with it. They let her do it. They knew what she was gonna do. Now, I wanna be real clear about this. Greta Gerwig is not a hack. She's not a shill. 
And I don't think that she has any devious machinations behind what it was she wanted to do. I think she very much made the movie she wanted to make and said the things she wanted to say with it sincerely. That having been said, it wasn't snuck under the noses of the suits. There were people at two massive corporations who had to sign off on this, Warner Brothers and Mattel. She didn't sneak it by them. They signed off on it. So however subversive the film may feel, it is allowed into theaters in the state that it is with the full awareness and a massive marketing push from both the corporate entities behind it. So I feel like, you know what? I'm going to make a comparison. And this is a comparison that's either going to snap into place exactly what I'm talking about, or it's going to leave you wondering what the hell I'm on about. Hopefully it'll work. We'll see. You remember five or six years ago when the Wendy's official Twitter account started like trolling people, slagging off other brands in the replies to tweets by those other brands and getting into fights in its own in its own comment sections with other users? When the Twitter account, the bland corporate official back when the blue check mark meant something and you couldn't just pay for it official corporate account for wendy's started acting like a person and a kind of unhinged person at that you remember how exciting that was how it felt like corporate doesn't know they must not know they're not keeping on top of this there's no way that they can know what whoever's running the Twitter account is doing. They wouldn't let it, let them get away with this. And in addition to what the Wendy's account was doing, being funny, that added to it because you felt like you were in on something. You were watching somebody get away with something. It was exciting. And then every other corporate account started doing it. They all got sassy. They all got cute. They all tried to jump in on trending topics. They all tried to post as if they were people instead of corporate accounts. And by the fourth, fifth, sixth, twelfth of these things, you realize, oh, oh, it's not an issue of corporate doesn't realize what's going on. They're letting it happen because it helps their bottom line. It can appear to be subversive and against the interest of the company and, ooh, wait till they get caught. They're going to get in so much trouble. It's not a question of getting caught. Maybe when Wendy's did, and Wendy's might not have even been the first, that was just the one that I remember blowing up first. Maybe when Wendy's first started doing it, maybe it was a little bit of a daring thing to do, but everyone that came after that, no, they knew exactly what they were doing. And over time with each new one, you're like, oh yeah, there's another corporate account being cute and sassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see through this now. We know what you're doing. It's not cute anymore. That was my experience of watching the Barbie movie. Whereas I feel like most other people's experience of watching the Barbie movie was like finding the Wendy's Twitter account. For me, it was like finding the 12th Wendy's Twitter account knockoff. That's what it felt like. So rather than just leave this as like a general impression, I am gonna go over some specifics within the movie that really have solidified this feeling for me that have kind of sour me on the film overall. And again, I'm going to reiterate right now, I don't think it's a bad movie. I don't think Greta Gerwig's a hack. I don't think she's a shill. I don't think she was secretly um, being manipulated by the executives. I think she made exactly the movie she wanted to make. It's connecting with a lot of people. It's landing with a lot of people. They love it. They like it. Younger audiences are getting introduced to these ideas of anti-patriarchy and feminism and the importance of positivity. Like, all these are good things that were not my experience of the movie. I can only speak from the perspective I have. I'm not going through these to convince you that Barbie is not good, actually. I do think Barbie is good. I just did not get to have the same experience. And that's what I'm talking about. And I am now going to get into some specifics as to why. The first thing is the corporate characters. They honestly really rub me the wrong way. Some people have cited them as being a problem because they're cartoonish. Like the fact that the offices have these cubicles that literally have no way in and out. So like it's clearly an exaggeration despite the fact that it's supposed to be the quote unquote real world and it seems just as cartoonish as Barbie world does in a lot of ways. I, that's not my problem. 
I think that's fine. I think bending the realism to make your thematic uh, point and also kind of making the point corporate culture is just as artificial and warped as Barbie land is. No, that is totally valid. You can do that. That's fine. That's not my problem. My problem is that it feels like criticism. It feels like poking at people who deserve it, but it's actually making them seem harmless. Because you have Will Ferrell, who I don't really like in most things and didn't really like him in this, and I think they let him improv too much, and I think they let too much of that improv stand because everybody laughed on the set on the day. I think his scene should have been cut by half. But regardless, even if he nailed it and I wasn't bothered by him, Ultimately, what are these doing? You might think, oh, wow, the executives at Mattel let themselves be depicted as selfish, buffoonish, foolish, ignorant, overly money-focused. Woo. Surprised they, they let Greta Gerwig do that. I'm not. You know why? Because you know what else it makes them look like? Harmless. Because the executives aren't the villain. There isn't really a villain. Well, patriarchy is the villain. But <laughs> there isn't a, a character villain in the movie. And that in and of itself is fine. But you have these stand-ins for the suits. And yes, they're poked fun at. Yes, they're laughed at. They also remain in the same positions that they were in before. They are treated as, at worst, Foolish, a little ignorant, and maybe a little selfish. They don't mean anything by it, though. They don't mean to do bad things. They're just not realizing. Or, you know, they need to learn. They need to be taught. I'm not comfortable with the heads of major corporations like Mattel being depicted uh, as harmless. Because they're not. Their decisions and the way that they affect lives of their employees and the lives of other people in the world, are massive responsibilities. And if they are going to be depicted as buffoonish, then they should be removed from those positions. They shouldn't be left there. That shouldn't be treated as just okay. Are we all just like, okay with this? That's kind of what I mean when I say that there is the cloud of corporate approval on this. Because... I'm not going to claim that there was an earlier version of the script where the uh, CEO and the other uh, people in that office and in that boardroom, you know, were more maliciously evil and they were, you know, jailed or lost their jobs. I'm not claiming that there was an earlier version of the script that did that, but I am going to say that if there was, this would have been the compromise. You can make fun, but you can't make them the villains. Another moment that kind of sums it up really, really well, is a moment later on where Barbie is just very overwhelmed by everything going on. She talks about how she doesn't feel pretty. And the narrator, who is established and has been a part of the movie, in voiceover says, a note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is not the person who should be delivering this message. Let's set aside for a moment the fact that uh, people considered classically or traditionally or idealized way beautiful uh, still have every right to feel like they aren't pretty. But the point is not invalid because that's usually the kind of person who is delivering this message in Hollywood. So while it's perfectly valid for someone that most people would say is by most measures, a beautiful person, they are still allowed to feel bad. That is the way that this tends to get presented regardless. So it's not an invalid point. But the movie still does it. They point out that it's not really okay, but it's also still there. And more to the point, the narrator that points this out is Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren is famously one of the most lasting beauties in all of cinema. She has retained uh, an accepted level of beauty through ages where most people would be considered too old to be considered beautiful. So not only is 
arguably the actress saying the line within movie, the wrong person to deliver the message. Uh, so's the narrator pointing it out. And also, you still did it. To quote Yahtzee Croshaw, If you know it's bad, why are you doing it? And again, that very much carries the flavor of the corporate approval of, of the supposed subversion. Corporations like Warner Brothers, like Mattel, they know it's good for business if they seem like they have a sense of humor about themselves, or if it seems like they let creative minds do what they're gonna do, even if it includes criticizing them. That is good for their image. I don't want their image to be good. I don't want people to come out of this thinking well of Mattel or Warner Brothers. But the fact that people seem to take this movie and very much that, oh, do you believe they got away with that? Oh, they didn't get away with it. They were allowed to do it because the final product that hit the theaters was viewed by both corporate entities as being a net positive for them. Does that mean 100% devoid of criticism for either of them? No, no, it doesn't. But they wouldn't have let it out the door if they thought the criticism was harsher than whatever the returns were gonna be, either financial or in terms of goodwill. So you have things like in the boardroom where it's pointed out everyone in there is a man. That's a real valid point. In its decades of existence, Mattel has had two female CEOs. The first one wasn't until the 90s. The second one wasn't until the late 2010s. It's a legitimate criticism that a brand that so much of its marketing power is in marketing to women and girls does not have any interest in empowering people of that same gender identity into actual positions of power within the company. That's a legitimate problem. And they made it a joke. And that's the thing. Like, you can say to me and not be wrong that within these jokes, they are pointing out actual issues. You know, issues of Barbie's uh, image. Issues of uh, too many men in industry. Issues of who gets allowed to have a voice in discussions of bodies and body positivity. Yeah. These are all legitimate points, but the thing is none of these things, none of these problems are funny. I feel like the only time they are allowed to come up, especially when it is in opposition to a standard corporate mandate or through line or message, is when they're delivered couched in humor. See, we can laugh at ourselves. I don't want you to laugh at yourself. I want you to change what you're doing. I don't want Mattel to go, ha ha ha, boardroom of all men. I want you to fix the problem. I don't want a movie to go, <laughs> Margot Robbie's the wrong person to give this message. I want it to address that problem, not just point it out. Because just continuing to do the same thing while pointing out that it's not good, that's not endearing to me for very long. I have reached a point in my life where I don't actually think very highly of self-deprecation as a thing, something I try and do less in my own life because, you know, it can be a way to seem more human, more approachable, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, though, I think it's not good for a lot of people's ego when you do it too much. But the thing is, you know, people certainly have a right to self-deprecate. I've done it before. I don't want businesses to self-deprecate. I don't want corporations to self-deprecate because you're not a person. Regardless of what the legal definition is, regardless of the nonsense that is corporate personhood and regardless of the fact that money is somehow speech, you're not a person. You're a company. And so when you make fun of yourself, it's not endearing. It's not cute. It's a manipulation. It's a way to act like you deserve the kind of benefit of the doubt that a human being would get when you're a corporate entity that is harming the planet, society, any number of things. I don't want to see you encouraging me to laugh at you. I will laugh at you, but not on your terms. 
I don't want to laugh at the jokes you allow to happen about you. If I'm going to laugh at corporate America or at the uh, unrealistic beauty standards, I'm going to do it with people who aren't a part of that system. Because the, oh, we're all friends here. <laughs> See, I can laugh at myself. <laughs> Unless you're actually going to change your behavior to go along with that laughter, I don't care. And this, in tone, has gotten a little bit more spiteful and a little more bitter than I want. And I want to be clear, that bitterness is not directed at the film. That bitterness is directed at the corporate entities who are going to try and bank goodwill off this. And they're not going to get very much. We're probably going to see them do what corporate entities almost always do, which is to completely miss the point and not understand why this is such a hit. And we're going to get things like a Polly Pocket movie um, because they just think this means people want doll movies. That's the bizarre thing about corporate thinking. On the one hand, they are aware that Greta Gerwig was making fun of them and they signed off on it because they believe they can benefit from it. They are smart enough to do that. Yet at the same time, they are foolish enough to think that if they just cobble together the most superficial aspects of Barbie and do it again, they'll get the same success again. So they're going to throw together other Mattel-based movies that are just going to be big on pastel colors and and slightly risque humor. And they think they'll get the same result. They can recognize that a piece of art, because Barbie is art. And I don't just mean that because, you know, it's all art. No, I mean, like, it is a work of art. They can see the way that can benefit them. It doesn't mean that they actually understand what went into its creation would allow it to happen again, especially when they think they can break it down into its component pieces, reassemble it, and have something just as good. So the bitterness you're hearing from me, it's not directed at Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Greta Gerwig, Noah Baumbach, any of the people involved at the granular level with the movie. It's directed at Warner Brothers, and it's directed at Mattel. I don't like it when corporate entities of that size, because corporate entities of that size are inherently damaging to the free market, well, the free market, what a lie that is, to the market, to the environment, to society. They're just bad. They're bad across the board. Don't try to endear yourself to me. I will resent you for it. And this is something that is probably going to be a criticism that is going to pop up for other things. It didn't really pop up for the MCU with She-Hulk. They kind of got away with that again a little bit on precedent because She-Hulk as a character has done that before. They try and pull that again. I'm probably going to resent them for it. If I, uh, if I feel like Star Wars is doing it, I might resent them for it. Disney as a whole, I definitely kind of have started to resent for it. As I get deeper into my 40s, I am tired. And I am fed up. And I am immune to the charm of these tricks. And maybe part of the reason I was willing to believe that the Matrix Resurrections really did sneak that in under the radar was because it, it was just one moment. But when it's this core to the film, no. That went through too many approval levels. Went through too many layers at two different massive corporations. They knew. They knew it was critical of Barbie and of them, they let it go out anyways because they think it's good for them. And while again, I do not feel that reflects badly on any of the artists who actually made it, um, it does still make me not as embracing of the product. I'm not trying to stomp on anybody's good time with Barbie. It's actually been really wonderful for me to see how much people love it to see the reasons that they love it. Because the reasons that they love it are wonderful to see and hear and read. It just wasn't going to work on me. And I had to talk about why. And if I've ruined it for you, I'm actually kind of sorry. Or if you think that I have completely overstepped and gone too harsh. Well, maybe. I don't know. But whatever your thoughts are, on my issues with what my experience of Barbie was and my issues with the shadow of corporate approval that I felt hanging over it and that other people 
either didn't notice or aren't bothered by. Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. If I didn't completely take you off, consider helping me continue to do this as my living. But um, don't worry too much about that. There's other stuff that you can follow or check out from me that are down in the description. Um, check out the uh, fund to help the striking unions. We support them here. But what I really want you to remember, you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. A special thanks to my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Renabi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Adam RDL Taylor, Dave Hall, and Rosalind Beck. You'll see a bunch of other names down there as well. There's plenty of things to get on the Patreon. And yeah, you can hear me attempt to say your name without embarrassing myself. Check out the rewards and thank you for everyone who supports this. <laughs>